Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Zama Kumalo and today I'm gonna do something different. I know I've been saying I'm gonna do something different for the last two videos, but like this time it's like different, different. I did a get to know me and I feel like you guys didn't really get to know me because one of the things that you guys should know is that I'm interested in murder cases. So today I decided to look up a murder case, research up on it, and get ready while talking about it. I think I'm gonna do this all the time, but I'm just gonna make sure that it's South African based. I'm not gonna do any other countries' murder cases. I really feel like South Africa is never really represented in terms of in terms of murder. And I know that's not a good thing, but I mean, there aren't any TV shows that really, you know, represent SA. So I'm here for for the people who are interested because it's all we all know the american ones you know they've done it a thousand times but how many south african murders do you know murderers do you know exactly i don't know if i should have an intro for this i really feel like there is no intro needed you guys get the point right yeah anyways guys let's just get into it i'm not going to tell you what i'm going to be using but i will put everything down in the description box so if you guys want to know what I'm using on my face, it's down there. Everything is, I'm laid out perfectly, okay? So I'm going to be talking about Stuart Wilkins and he is a serial killer and a serial rapist. I will be giving you guys a backstory. Stuart was born on the 11th of November, 1966 in Boxburg in Gauteng. And he was one of two children. He had an older sister. So his parents, his biological parents, raised him until he was six months old and then they left him and his sister in a phone booth and in the morning a housekeeper a housekeeper found them and took them to her boss so the boss's name was Duop, and Duop was an abusive man naturally but he was willing to take Stuart and his sister in i don't really know the sister's name i couldn't find it so just know Stuart had a sister because she's not even in this most of the time but i think it's just important to know that he had a sister so Duop takes them in and he's hella abusive like Duop would force Stuart to eat with the dogs he had two dogs he forced Stuart to eat with the dogs so he would put his food into the dog's bowl and give it to the dogs and Stuart would have to fight the dogs off to eat so over the months he became really malnourished yeah and also Dup would rape his dogs and then force Stuart to watch and then after that make Stuart lick his genitals after. Dup would also burn Stuart's genitals with cigarettes like he would burn the cigarettes on him and yeah man he was just like yo not the best guy so Dup's neighbors they were named the Wilkins. Dup didn't even give Stuart a name he was just the kid you know so the neighbors decided to take Stuart in Stuart and his sister and adopt him but in order to officially adopt him they had to get a hold of Stuart's mom which they did so they found Stuart's mom and she actually came to the house and saw Stuart she brought him sweets but like it wasn't really discussed and they never really told him like hey Stuart this is your mom so for a while in Stuart's memory he just knows that there was a lady who once brought some sweets but then as time moved on like he realized nah that's my mom he never saw her again after that so the Wilkins took Stuart in and they said that he was troublesome like he wasn't good in school he wasn't good socially and he was just destructive overall in class he failed grade one once and then he failed grade three three times and then another detail was that he started smoking weed when he was eight. And then when he was nine, the deacon of the church his family went to started molesting him when he was nine. The time goes on and then the Wilkins decide to give Stuart away. They take him to child welfare. So they just give up on him. They were like, hey, we tried. Um, we failed. We can't do this anymore. So then they gave Stuart away, but they kept the sister. There isn't really much detail about the sister, so I just think she was the normal one. Not saying Stuart was not normal, but you know, she was the normal one. So they kept her and then they took Stuart to child welfare. And Stuart was still getting sexually abused by the kids at the child welfare, like the older kids. 
so you know he just he wasn't doing well and also he still wasn't doing well in school he dropped out after grade 11 so he didn't get a matric so after grade 11 Stuart went into the army and then he stayed there for four months until he tried to commit suicide but he failed so I feel like that's when he was like you know what f this I can't I can't do school I can't do the army I can't even successfully kill myself so I feel like that's when like something clicked inside of him so then after that his failed suicide attempt he left the army and then lived with his mom and they lived together in Port Elizabeth so he lived with her and then she took him to an FET college where he learned to be a carpenter but he got a hand injury and he couldn't continue anymore so he had to leave that too so now he's just chilling doing nothing but he did get a disability pension and that's how he was surviving over the years so he didn't have a job he just lived off his disability pension and then one night he was at a club and he met his to-be wife lynn lynn already had a child so he was cool with that he wasn't really mad at that so they got married and they had a child of their own on the 25th of December, 1985. After they had Wu'an, Lynn said that Stuart refused to have like sexual relations with her. And he started being really insecure and thought she was cheating on him. So every single time when she came from work, he would check like her underwear and stuff. Because he thought she was selling herself on the streets. So over the years, the relationship ended up becoming really abusive. Lynn would call the cops on Stuart every time she would catch him smoking weed. But then Stuart would always like beat her up before the police get there. So this happened for quite a while until Stuart was admitted into a psychiatric hospital where he was diagnosed as a psychopath. But then when he was admitted out of the hospital, when they released him, lynn was like not having it she was like as soon as he gets here i'm calling the cops again so he got there and she called the cops and Stuart panicked so then he took pills and he overdosed so like he was trying to kill himself again but he didn't succeed because while the police were on the way lynn also said that this guy has overdosed with pills so then they got an ambulance so when the ambulance got there they could get him into hospital and he didn't die but he was in critical condition for a while and that's when Lynn decided to divorce him, like officially she was done with him. And that was in the early 1990s. So after the divorce, Stuart met another woman, her name was Veronica. Veronica already had two sons, but then her and Stuart had two other children after. So Veronica's parents didn't like Stuart because they had a feeling that Stuart was raping Veronica's two sons. So then, they pressed charges on Stuart and Stuart had to move out and Stuart didn't have a place to live. So then he started living in a field behind an amusement park. And that's where he lived in, in his car, obviously, but behind an amusement park. And that's where he lived. But then for some odd reason, on the 25th of January, 1997, the charges against Stuart were dropped. No one really knows why, no one really asked why, I guess, but they were dropped. A week later, Sergeant Norsworthy from the Port Elizabeth Murder and Robbery Unit gets a phone call from Child Protection about a missing kid named Henry Bakers. Henry Bakers had last been seen with Stuart on the 22nd of January, 1977. So a couple of days before they dropped the charges so there had been another girl who had also been missing two years ago and she was also last seen with Stuart. The girl who was missing was Wu An, Stuart's daughter. So Sergeant Norsworthy decides to call Stuart into his office for questioning. Stuart comes in and Sergeant Norsworthy, he's like, he's looking confident, he's feeling confident. He tells Stuart all of his achievements. He even shows him all of his like awards and stuff like all of his things are like on the walls and on his table so like you know he's trying to show Stuart that you know I'm good at this so he tells him all the crimes that he's solved and all the medals that he's got you know he's just flexing after telling Stuart about all of his achievements he asks Stuart like who he is like just to tell him about himself and Stuart introduces himself as Budibua. I don't know how the Afrikaans people would say it, but like the black people would say Budbor. 
you know like you just you just you cut you cut the booty you know so yeah he called himself that and that was basically like his second personality so he didn't introduce himself as Stuart. After Sergeant Norsworthy, you know, flexes about all his all of his achievements, there happened to also be a picture of Sergeant's daughter. And Sergeant noticed that, you know, Stuart is staring at this picture. Like he's not even taking like notice to Sergeant. Sergeant decides to excuse himself. And then a few minutes later he comes back and then he gets straight to the point. He was like, Yo, Stuart, um, I know you have something to do with henry going missing and your daughter who and going missing so like tell me now just to make things easier you know and i guess sergeant was expecting Stuart to like try to like run away from the situation or like defuse everything but Stuart just went straight at him and he was like yep i did it who gonna check me who gonna check me? who gonna check me who gonna check me exactly I'm kidding but yeah Stuart said like yeah i did it both of them i did it and also on my way here i actually had sex with henry's body after Stuart tells the sergeant that you know he was just with henry's body earlier on he also tells him that wu an's body is actually in his hideout where he lives and he had been sleeping next to wu an's body this whole time and when her body started to decompose too much he took a tarp a tarp is a is like um you know the camping the, the cover thing for the camping so it's waterproof it's this cover thing that people normally use as a roof for when they're camping and they put it like next to their car or something and he said he had just been sleeping next to her every night and he hadn't said that he was raping the body like he just said nah like me and and we hang out and then sergeant was like hey since he's in the mood to confess might as well just ask like straight up like are there other people so then Sergeant knows where they are, Stuart, like, are there any other bodies and stuff? Or are there, other, are there any other people that you've done this to? And Stuart was literally like, yeah, there is. I think there's like 10. He didn't even say like 10 exactly. He was just like, yeah, I think there's 10. So then, like, Sergeant was like, okay, tell me about the, the 10 people then, sir. And Stuart was like, nah, call in my lawyer. I want my lawyer to be present when I talk about this. So then they call Stuart's lawyer in and he comes and Stuart literally just confesses everything. But he's like, he doesn't even care. Like he's swearing at them, calling the victims like words that I don't think I can say. But like, he was going at it during this whole time. And he also tells them like where all the bodies are and stuff. So that was the interview. That's what happened. Let's get into the murders. On the night of September 3rd, 1990, Stuart had a fight with Lynn. They were still married by then. So she had, he had a fight with Lynn and I think he, he was 23 at the time. So he had a fight with Lynn, left the house. He went to like a, a bridge kind of place where the prostitutes like of that of Port Elizabeth in his area. The prostitutes used to stay there. So he went there, found Virginia. Virginia was a prostitute there and she was like, sup honey, show me the money, I'm gonna show you a good time. So Stuart shows Virginia the money and he takes her to a nearby school. So they drive to the school, they do what has to be done, but then Stuart was like, yo, I want anal. Virginia was like, uh -uh, I don't do that type of stuff. But then Stuart forced her to do it. And when she was complaining, Stuart got really irritated and then he strangled her with a piece of cloth and he climaxed while he was strangling her and then he left her body there at the school like on the school grounds he left her body on the school grounds and then in january 10th 1991 stewart met another sex worker by the name of marissa and she said she wanted to see the money before they did anything so stewart was like okay first let's go to the park so she agrees and they go to the park and then she asks to see the money and Stuart got really mad because in Stuart's mind, sex should be free. He shouldn't have to pay for sex. So she, he got really irritated. So then he strangled her with his belt and while he was strangling her, he was raping her and climaxed while she was dying. Yeah. And then on October 21st, 1991, Stuart met a young street boy. He was 14 years old. And again, he was like, Ayo, I'm trying to tap that. 
then the kid was like okay if you pay me i'll do it so then Stuart was like okay cool i'll pay you but after so then Stuart takes a kid to a nearby park he's really into parks i think that was the pattern he was really into parks so he took the kid to a nearby park and when the kid was like pay up Stuart was like mm -mm. and then Stuart strangled the kid and climaxed while the kid was dying Stuart said that he actually found pleasure in strangling the people because it had a jelly bean effect he just made the jelly bean effect up but it actually is a thing when you're strangling someone their tongue sticks out their mouth swells and their eyes poke out and that gave sexual pleasure to Stuart. he climaxed when that happened that was just his kink and then he just left the boy's body in the field so somewhere between january 1993 and september 1993 Stuart met another 14 year old boy and this time he asked the boy if he could give him a hand job and the boy was like okay cool but for exchange for money and Stuart, in his heart he was like fuck this little bitch like he, he really hated it like he despised of it so then he was like to the kid yeah sure but we have to go to the park and then the kid obviously being naive he's a street kid he needs money so then he agreed so then they went to the park and then the kid asked for money Stuart did the same thing that he always did he raped him but he didn't kill him until the kid said that he was going to go to the police station and snitch on Stuart for raping him and then Stuart got really mad and then took his belt and strangled the kid and raped him again and climaxed while the kid was dying on July 27th 1995 this was just oof, one of Stuart's bad days because Stuart met another sex worker by the name of Georgina and Georgina asked for money first. He was like, okay, cool. Let's go to the park. Georgina agreed to go to the park. When Georgina demanded the money, Stuart got mad and then he raped her. Obviously, while he was raping her, he strangled her and he climaxed while she was dying. But then this kind of way it all gets fucked up because... After doing that, Stuart took his knife, put his knife up Georgina's vagina, and he just raped her with the knife. So he was just cutting her up. And then after that, he just slashed her nipples and ate them. And then he left her at a nearby school. After doing all that, Stuart threw all of Georgina's clothes into a nearby pond. He admitted to Sergeant Norsworthy that the reason why he started doing that, like throwing away the clothes, is because he had been present one of the times when the police found one of his victim's bodies and he had noticed they were taking forensic hair evidence. So then he started throwing away the clothes so that his hair wouldn't be found. On September 25, 1995, Stuart went to go visit his daughter, Wu An, who was living with her mom and her stepdad. And Wu An had spoken to Stuart and told him that her stepdad was sexually assaulting her. Like this ticked Stuart off. So he was like, he was like fed up. So then he was like, let's go Wu An. So he takes Wu An to the amusement park where he lived at. And they sat for a bit, but then not long after he strangled her to death. So Sergeant Norsworthy asks him if he sexually assaulted the body. And Stuart said, nah, I didn't do none of that. I just checked if she was a virgin. And she wasn't. I got really pissed, but I didn't rape her. I didn't do anything like that. I would just, I sleep next to her. That's all I do. But forensic evidence showed that Stuart had raped Wu An's body multiple times. Multiple times. Stuart also admitted that very often he would go back to the victims and he would like have sex with them again. And he said that he stuffed newspapers in their anuses so that maggots wouldn't get there so the maggots could get everywhere else but like he, he made sure he preserved the anus and that's just man that is that is just a hand. oh my gosh on may 26 1996 Stuart met another sex worker by the name of christina so they met at a highway this time Obviously, Christina said money first. Still was like cool. Then he took her to like a secluded grass kind of place. You know, it's just random grass. He took her there. And then he raped her, obviously. And then he also stuffed a plastic bag down her throat. Strangled her, did all of that, you know, his huge. But then he also put a, a plastic bag down her throat. And he told her that thou shalt not steal. So he, he like, he, he, he quoted the Bible. 
he was like thou shalt not steal because he felt like sex workers were stealing money from people because sex should be free you know it says that it says that it doesn't really say that in the bible but you know he he interpreted it in his own way and then he did something different this time he left her body next to a graffiti wall and the graffiti wall said do not steal so he left her body there he said he like while he was saying this in the office with sergeant noseworthy he was like laughing he he found it so funny he was like yo guys did you get the joke though like <laughs> he was like doing that he was like yeah huh? you know she stole so i put her away at a place where it says do not steal so he was like he was trying to get the sergeant to laugh with him but obviously that ain't funny sometime between august 1996 and may 1996 stuart met another street kid who was a boy he was about 12 years old they're not really sure how old he was but he was like 12 or 13 and this time he just snatched him he didn't ask him for anything he just snatched him sodomized him and he took him to the school and left him there on the schoolyards for the children to see in the morning on the 22nd of january 1997 Stuart met a young boy named Henry Baker. This was his final kill because after this he got caught. Henry Baker was a child of one of Stuart's friends. I'm saying friends because they were like close, close, but you know, like they were acquainted with each other. He said that Henry asked him to teach him everything he knows about sex. And Stuart was like, okay, cool, I'll teach you, but let's go to a park. Stuart took the boy to the park and then he was like, yo, undress so the boy undresses and still was like you give me head and then the boy did that so then the boy gives gives him head and then still was like yo bend over and the boy's like mm -mm, don't do that but then still forced himself on the boy and while the boy was screaming obviously still got irritated so then he strangled him and did what he does all the time he strangled him got excited by the jelly bean effect and climaxed while the kid was dying now i don't understand stuart doesn't even have like standards at this point he was like even going for his friends kids you don't do that i mean you don't do any of it obviously you don't kill but like i would think because like a lot of murderers don't go for their family it's, it's very rare or they like their friends and stuff they normally go for randos but then i guess since stuart is a certified psychopath it didn't really affect him Stuart was charged with 10 murders, but he was convicted of only seven. And on the 23rd of February, 1998, Stuart was convicted of seven life sentences. It was supposed to be the death penalty, but obviously in SA, the death penalty isn't a law, so they couldn't do that. But if they could, Stuart was going to be put on the chair. But you know, he was lucky. He wasn't. During his sentencing, he asked the courts to give him a long sentencing so that he can, and I quote, so that I can receive treatment and one day, if I'm ever allowed free, to live like a normal person. So, Sergeant Noseworthy decided to track Stuart's biological mom down. I think he just wanted her to know, I guess. I don't really know why he did that. But... He checked, he checked Stuart's biological mother, Dan, and he had like an interview with her. And she told Sergeant that she didn't really want to abandon Stuart and his sister, but her husband at the time forced her to. He said that they weren't ready to have kids, so then he forced her to give Stuart away. Not give him away, but you know, leave him and his sister in a phone booth. She said that she re-adopted Stuart's sister when she was 19. So if Stuart stayed a bit longer with the Wilkins family, I don't, I don't know. I don't think any of this would have happened. So um, when Sergeant Noseworthy got all of this information, I think he was just like, shame. I think it it's only makes sense that Stuart gets to talk to his mom. And his mom also wanted to talk to her. So he was like, okay, I'm going to try to set it up. But the court didn't let stuart see his mom but they did allow a phone call and in that phone call stuart was just crying like he was just bawling his eyes out and he was just like mommy mommy but like he was really sad about it and he like kept on calling his mom mommy and stuff and that was the first time he had ever called anyone that because even his um adoptive mom he called her mrs wilkins so i'm, I'm gonna do my lips i can't talk 
so yeah while Stuart was like just crying to his mom his mom was just like nah everything's gonna be okay i'm gonna visit you all the time you know like just uh lying they interviewed Stuart, and they were asking him like do you feel bad for any of the crimes you did like do you regret anything and Stuart was like no i don't i don't regret anything because first of all like i said they were stealing and you can't steal god said you can't steal so you know i was like doing the world a favor so in his mind he he didn't do anything wrong to any of these people none of the kids none of the prostitutes not even his own daughter he like felt bad for nothing because at first people are like wow he's like so emotional they just had hope they thought maybe after he spoke to his mom like it would knock some sense into him but he is a psychopath this isn't news so i'm just gonna put my eyelashes on and do my under eyes and then i'll come back with my final thoughts about this whole thing because i have a couple thoughts also i just wanted to add that they didn't incriminate any of Stuart's family except for lynn so one day lynn was going to the phone booth to make a call and they said a dodgy car stopped by the phone booth and took lynn and the next day lynn's body was found next to a river and her whole face was just smashed open like she was beat many many times with the brick the worst part is they didn't even bother to look for the killers that's like that's like i'm mad at that like they didn't even care to do that they're like oh oh lynn look at that there was no investigation regarding like the whole crime and everything they just accepted that lynn got beat in the face with a brick i feel like a lot of situations could have stopped what happened and what all these 10 people had to go through and i don't understand why he was charged for 10 things but only convicted of seven like i know like he's not going to serve all seven life sentences but the fact that it should have been said that you know 10 people died so you need to go to jail for 10 lives you know that is the story of Stuart wilkins i hope you guys enjoyed it i sure did and please let me know if you guys are interested in this and want me to continue doing this just write it down in the comment section i read my comment section also please feel free to follow any of my social media accounts i have a twitter account and i have two instagram accounts one dedicated to makeup and one is my personal one also please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and to also like the video and turn on your bell notification button so that you get a notification every single time i post uh, deuces